Hello everyone and welcome to week four of Christmas Tag Tuesday. Today I'm going to share with you some oversized tags. So if you have really large gifts, these tags are going to work for you. This is a four by six panel and I'm pretty much using all of it to create the tags today. And you can see by what I've got in front of me here, I've got some wood paper and I've got Christmas snow globes, which is December's stamp of the month. And it's very exciting because my very dear friends, both from Canada, Julie Carrier and Chelsea Forrest-Marty are joining Joining me today and we're all doing tags with the Christmas snow globes. You might notice that this is a little bit different from the normal stamp of the months that we have become used to in the past. This one comes with thin cuts. If you are a VIP and you place an $80 order you can get this stamp set for free. If you place an online order for $80 you can add this to your cart for $9. But this one has thin cuts as well and I'm going to be using the thin cuts today because I'm making some oversized window type tags. And if you'd like it with the thin cuts and you've placed your $80 order, you can purchase them for $39.50. You can get them without the thin cuts, as I've said before. I'm also going to be using Parisian florals. Now, I used this in week one for my tags and I'm bringing it back in again, but I'm using this orange type stamp set here. And I'm also going to use Design Elements, which has been brought back. This was in the September October catalogue, but close to my heart, I've brought that back and I'm going to be using my favourite stamp image out of this one which is this crackle type effect. I'm going to do some ink blending, I'm going to do some die cutting and I've got some colouring in to do as well. So uh, let's get into this and the prep. What I'm going to do first though is start prepping my tag. So I'm creating my own tag here. So I'm going to go just in from the edge here, take this piece that I've cut, turn that over, use that as a guide to come in from the other side and then I've got a perfectly symmetrical tag. I'm going to need a base layer and the base layer is going to be in espresso and I'm using the darker side and then I can use my tag that I've cut here to cut along the edges and create a matching tag from it. So as I said before this is a four inch by six inch piece. So I think for this one, I'm going to use this little snow design down here, Snow Village. There's a cute car with presents on top and a wreath on the front of the car. There's a Christmas tree and there's also a doorway with a wreath and a little tree on it. They really are very cute images. So I'm going to line this up in the center here and run this through my die cutting machine. And I'm prepping this piece now because I'm going to stamp the image on this as well. So let me just set aside the espresso and get into the stamp. The first one I'm going to do, I think I'm going to use charcoal ink because I want this to stand out. So this one does have a right and a wrong way to it. You can see there's some writing on here. So I want to make sure that I do all my stamping with the stamp going this way where the writing is going to be visible. So I'm just going to ink up my stamp and do a little bit of random type stamping on this. You can see how beautifully this stamps. This is one of my favorite sets in this catalog. I don't want them all to be in a line like this. I want to make sure that I get some of this orange element, this orange part of the stamp here. I want to make sure that goes on certain areas of this stamp. And I can also bring it across so that it spans across this and stamps some over the top of this little window hole here. And then I'm going to come in and do a little bit of stamping just with these edge images. And this is where I can rotate it just a little bit because the writing won't be as obvious. But I don't want it to look quite that even. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with the charcoal ink. Then I'm going to come in with espresso and the crackle. And I'm basically going over areas of this, almost covering up the entire tag. So I am going for a bit of a distressed wood type look on all of these tags. You saw me rotate the stamp then. So you don't want to keep stamping things exactly the same way when you're doing something like a background piece. Just rotate it and stamp it all over. And now I'll just bring in another piece of this paper so you can see the difference between adding some layered stamping on this 
and the original piece of paper. The next bit of treatment that I'm going to do with this is do some ink blending and distress the edges a little bit. Now I could do this with the charcoal ink but that's going to cover up quite a bit of the stamping that I've just done. So I'm just going to use espresso ink around all the edges of this tag. I'm not going to do the inside piece, I want that to be like a highlight. So I don't want to bring the ink in from the center here, I just want to do the edges. So I've got my distressed edges all done and the stamping's all done and I have taken the heat tool to this to dry the paper off a little bit and I'll explain why I've done that in just a moment. And now I'm just going to stamp the little snow globe image onto this piece that I've cut from the center. Normally I stamp first and then die cut, but this time around I've got to get my head over to line that up, so I've just edited that bit out. But it does stamp up beautifully and it works quite well with the wood behind it. I really like the rustic feel of doing this on the wood pattern paper. For the next step, I'm going to bring in a stencil. This is from one of the current 12 by 12 stencils and its main use is so that you can layer it up. There's four quadrants to this, you use the ink and you go all the way around and then you do the next layer and so on and so forth and that gives you a great design. But I really love these starburst patterns here on this and I think it's going to lend itself really well to Christmas. And what I'm going to do is bring in some texture paste. So I keep mine with some Glad Wrap over top to try and keep it all nice and moist. And I always pick up the texture paste with the back of my spatula here and then just scrape it through the holes. This is going to give a lovely textured design. Now, when I did this on a test couple that I made, I actually didn't dry the ink before I applied it. So when I've got the paste on here, I can scrape some of that off. I've still got some on the back of my knife here, my palette knife, and you can see what a gorgeous look that is. Now I'm not going to press down too hard on this area here because that is still wet. Texture paste does take some time to dry. And while this is drying, I'm going to do the colouring for my little snow globe that we have done. And I'm going to use the colour pencils for that. And you'll see how that works quite well on wood pattern paper. I'm loving how that looks and I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I might put another little one up in this area here if I can. Put that in there and see if I can scrape some more off my little palette knife. And I really love how that looks and that's going to dry back and give a beautiful texture to this piece. So to clean up, if you've got any texture paste left on your spatula, you can put it back in the jar. Put your film over top, make sure that you've still got that little sealer disc that's in there, that's in the lid here, and screw this on nice and tight, and your texture paste should stay of a consistency to allow you to spread. I've had this one open for quite some time and it's still performing well. And I really don't use it that often. Now normally I would just go and run this under the tap to get rid of the texture paste, but I wanna keep going with the video, so I'm doing that with a baby wipe. This is a water wipe, so there's no fragrance fragrance or any type of chemical in here at all so it's not going to damage my stencil so I just keep wiping it off until I've got all the texture paste out of here so that it doesn't stick inside these holes and clog up and dry. As I've said earlier I am going to bring in every one of the tags that I've made using this gorgeous snow globe set and I've used the Colorista colored pencils by Spectrum Noir and I've just kept to these colors and I will put a link to everything that I have used today in the description below along with the colors of pencils that I've used on the projects. So for this it's fairly simple coloring. I am just doing the roofs of these little houses in the village. For the blue, I am just going to go just around a little bit of the snow globe area. I'm not going to colour the whole snow globe in. So I'm just following where the lines are just to add a little bit of colour. I've got green for the trees, so that's basically all the colouring I'm doing for the houses, just the roofs. So it's very quick very easy and very simple. So that part's done and then I've got a grey to go around just to add a little bit of a shadow here to the stand of the snow globe 
and also along where the snow is and just bring a little bit in from each edge just to add a little bit of depth. Now that's probably not picking up terribly well on camera and I also want to do a little bit of grey on the bottom edge of the clouds. I think you can see that's happening there. I'll bring this up closer to the camera in just a moment. And then of course I'm going to do my moon in yellow. So you can see that's all the colouring that I need to do for this. And then I have my Jelly Roll pen, the number 10, and I'm going to do little dots all the way over more concentrated at the bottom to create the snow from the snow globe and then there'll be less dots as I get closer up to the top of where the snow globe is. I should just show you this close up. There's my little snow globe, concentrated snow down at the bottom and just on the other side of this little snow mound here. I have gone over the top of the images because that's what would be happening if you were shaking a snow dome. So I wanted to put the little flurries of snow. White gel pen just brings it all to life a little bit. So now to adhere this together and my texture paste isn't quite dry, so I'm just gonna use a heat gun on that for a moment. So it's a little bit drier now that I've used the heat gun and you can see what I mean about the color coming through from the inking below. It hasn't stayed totally white. If you wanted it to stay white, you could treat this with your anti-static pouch and put the texture paste on and then sprinkle on some white embossing powder and heat that up and that'll give you a lovely raised look. But I'm happy with the rustic look of this. So the assembly of this is quite simply going to be the top part of the tag with all the inking and the stamping and the texture paste and then the bottom of the tag is going to be just plain espresso but what I want to do is raise this up so that it looks a little bit more like a window. I have some black fun foam so if you have fun foam this works you can definitely use foam tape if you want to but I want it to be the black and I want a double layer. Now the reason why I've chosen black is so that it doesn't look as stark when you look at the side of the tag. White foam tape will show out a little bit more. So I'm not cutting this to be all straight and even. I am just going in with my scissors and cutting strips. And as I said, I want two strips of foam tape on top of each other for this to give a little bit of rise and dimension. So I'm going to keep doing that for all the way around the tag and then adhere that down. So I've got my fun foam all laid down here. It is double stacked, so it gives a bit more lift. And I'm just going to adhere this to the tag. I'm just using my Tombow Mono Air for this. And if you go slowly, not fast like I did for that one there, you'll get a nice coverage of this over your fun foam and it will be quite secure. Now I just need to line this up. I'm going to put that aside so I can put it over the top of my all-purpose mat. All-purpose mats are wonderful. You saw me do the stenciling. I could have done all the ink blending over it as well and wiped all the ink up. But you can definitely ink blend on these as well. And you can see that gives quite a nice lift to this tag. And as I said before, these are big tags. So if you have a large gift, they're going to look fabulous on those. And now I can just fit this in. So that fits quite nicely. And if you angle it and look through here, you can see the brown from the dark side of the espresso. And I've got plenty of room on the back here to write my to and from in metallic pen. And what I thought would be fun is to have some mocha glitter paper. So I've used the buildable tags and I do refer a lot to these during Tag Tuesday. These have the reinforcements for the round and for the oblong. And I use them all the time, even when I'm hand creating tags and not necessarily using the actual tags on here themselves. So I can just adhere this down on the front side. So and this has some gorgeous little bit of glitter on here. And I do like to finish off the back of my tag as well as the front. And now I'm going to finish this off with some twine. I really wanted to do red bows for this 
but I need to go shopping and stock up on my ribbon. But I think you can see a red bow on this would just look absolutely beautiful. But I'm just going with the twine and the gold thread to finish these off today. I might end up going and getting some red ribbon and changing these out before I put these onto gifts. Now, if you watched last year, you will have seen I use my crochet hook quite a lot to help me pull twine through. And I also did a tag last year where I made the actual twine. I actually crocheted the, the strands of the twine to give another feel to it. Now, this is about 36 inches long, this piece, and I've just folded it over on itself. So I've got four strands each side here. And then when I loop this through, I'll have eight coming out of the top of this tag as the string element. And I think with a tag this size, it's really good to have a decent amount of twine or a nice ribbon on here to finish things off nicely. And then I just need to snip off the loops that I've got. So and there's my finished tag all done. I actually quite like this twine. It's one of my favourites, but I really do think I'm going to go and see if I can get some more of this stitch type ribbon just to finish them off and add a little bit more colour. So now I'm going to bring in all the other tags that I've made using this. And I'm also going to give a couple of quick pointers on how to stamp this and how to make it look good when you're using a wood pattern paper. I'll just bring in the stamp set again. You can see that I've used all the images here in different wood papers. So depending on what wood paper and the depth of the color that you use, you'll get different results. So you can see I've stamped each of these gorgeous little images to create the tags. And with the wooden paper, what I found was this wood paper here was fairly dark. So when I stamped that element onto that to place in that middle portion here, it sort of got lost. So instead of doing that I stamped it on a lighter wood grain and that made it stand out a little bit more. Had the same issue with this one. This is a darker wood element and being a darker wood piece you can't quite see the images that I've stamped with this one here. I stamped the Parisian Notes orange image in charcoal on this and it stands out quite well but on this one it doesn't stand out quite as much and I was a little bit heavier handed with my inking through the edges. So that's just something to take note of and I knew that to try and stamp this image on the piece that was cut out from here just wasn't going to work and it wouldn't be a highlight in the center of my tag. So that's just something to consider when you're choosing your wood pattern paper. To do this insert piece I really think needs to be on a lighter color wood or if you use a lighter color wood pattern paper to start with, it's going to work quite well. Now, I think you can see the difference here too between the tag that I made on camera for you and the one that I did earlier. I did not wait for the ink to dry when I did my texture paste. So what has happened here is the white texture paste has actually taken on the color of the inking underneath. And it's a little bit like a happy accident really because it gives off a gold sort of look to it. And I've realized that I haven't done a little treatment to this. So I'm going to do that in a moment on this tag that I made on camera for you. I think you'll probably guess what that is just by me holding this up here. But I did want to show you the difference you get with the color of the texture paste if you make sure that the ink and the stamping that you've done is dry before you apply your texture paste. This one, as I said, it was still a little bit wet, so it's taken on more of a color. And that's not such a bad thing. But for this one, I wanted to see what would happen if everything was all nice and dry before I put the texture paste on there. On these two here you'll notice I've used a different stencil and this one is in a different pack in our essentials catalogue and I will link to them below. This one is a stencil of its own. It doesn't have a quadrants like the series of the one that I just did before on camera with you with this little burst here and I've used these diamonds and I've put them on a little bit of an angle and I love how Christmassy they look and the snowy sort of effect that they give like a night sky almost with that texture and you can see again that's taken on the tone of the inking underneath. Now the wood paper that I've used is from a whole different lot of collections. Some of it is actually from the wood grain collection that we had a couple of years ago or just last year I think it was. Some of it is from the Four Seasons pack. You can see here I think this was spring. It's got the green on the other side. So I did try it with this one and I didn't love the results as much as what I did with the darker toned wood grain. You can see this one's come out 
out when I put it up against here it's come out a little bit orangey compared to these ones I love the rusticness of these and the other thing to note with this one because it's a lighter wood grain paper the texture paste has not shown up as much when I've done that it's taken on the tone of the paper it's taken on the tone of the ink and it just doesn't show up as much as what these ones have so I do prefer the darker wood when it comes to doing the top layer of these tags and you could definitely create these as cards just with a normal four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels rather than making them into tags they'd make stunning cards as well now I'm just going to bring in my splatter box very quickly and show you how I've done the splatters now I actually did the splatters before I assembled everything and before I put the piece in here so what I'm going to do is just put a die cut piece that I've got on hand in here just to protect that and I'm going to bring in some Winsor & Newton ink. This is just the white. And this is like a calligraphy ink. I have used this in the past. And rather than getting a blending brush, I need a paintbrush. So this has got a fairly fine nib to it. And all I do is just dip it into the ink and just tap the paintbrush. And you can see I'm getting some splatters here. So if it's loaded up with quite a bit of ink, you're going to get these bigger spots, which I love, but I also want some smaller spots as well. And I think this creates a lovely look of whimsy to the tag. And then hopefully I'll be able to take out this middle piece. And I've got some gorgeous white splatters from this calligraphy ink here. It really is good for splattering with. If you've got the Dina Wakely gloss spray, you can use that as well. But I didn't want to put that layer of splatters onto my snow globe here. That's got enough treatment in there with the white gel pen. And I can't control the splatters, so I didn't want to cover up too much of that image in there. So there you have it, four tags, giant tags. You can see by my hand, they're almost the size of my hand, six by four inches, and they're perfect for extra large gifts. And I've really loved putting all the layered stamping on this, getting out the texture paste, which is something that I don't do often enough. It stays in the drawer and I sort of forget about it. But I love the feel of these and the rusticness that they have. Make sure you check out the links below. I will have links to both Chelsea's and Julie's video using this very same stamp set. So make sure you check out what they've done if you haven't done so already. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy crafting and bye for now.